the recession of rising commodity costs have made the consumer products market particularly difficult for retailers. And that's where Peter Clark, founder of Product Ventures in Fairfield, steps in. Product Ventures is the creative agency behind the brand packaging of some of the most recognizable products on store shelves, including these items you see right before me right now. Peter, good to have you on the program. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Becky. Tell me a little bit about the recession for you and what kind of challenges it has posed for your business when it comes to developing some of this packaging. Sure. Well, packaging in general is at the center stage, especially in a down economy. And add on top of that sustainability and the need for environmentally friendly options, packaging is right there. What we're seeing is a lot of the manufacturers are rethinking their value proposition as they're finding store brands or, or the stop and shop brands, etc. Well, it's called generics. Exactly. They're but getting, now. They're getting more sophisticated. They're uh, spending money and um, brightening up their packaging and making it more sophisticated looking. So that compelling point of difference or that point of difference, they're, they're closing the gap on the national brands or your Tides or what have you. So the, the, these brands are really thinking about how do we maintain and drive our loyalty with our consumer base. And there's been another complexity, or another part of this that's made it even more difficult, and that is the shrinking packaging. Oh, my favorite. And <laughs> it's been... And I'm being sarcastic, by the way. It's, it's very tough for the the product manufacturer and also for the consumer because the consumer feels like they're getting somewhat ripped off but the company can't go under so they need to reduce the size of the package. How does that affect you? Well, we're all often used as the instrument, the engineers behind the scenes that shape these packages for success and I like to advise my clients and consult them that the package is the brand ambassador. It's there once the commercial's off, it's there existing in the consumer's homes, it is the ambassador of that brand. So if it's not something you can trust, and it is part of this trickery of downsizing, it can have a bad backlash for the brand. So these things such as deepening the, the push-up, we call them, in the bottom of, let's say... It uh, looks like it's bigger than it is, but really the product start, stops here and the, the container continues down to here. Exactly. So the benchmark consumers have is, well, yes, it looks like it's the same size as what I used to buy, and they don't realize that there's less in there until maybe they start investigating or somebody tells them, then all of a sudden they've been and hoodwinked and the, you know mm -hmm. they don't they don't like that let's talk about some of the products sure. that you've designed the packaging for or reworked Heinz ketchup there's so much that goes into packaging that the average consumer doesn't really stop to think about they don't have to but what did you do to change the way Heinz sells their ketchup okay Heinz obviously been around for a very long time originally the heritage was in the glass bottle um, that actually had functional deficiencies but they played it up with anticipation they did. Yeah. With, uh, thumping and so forth it's a better quality because it takes longer to come out. Right, right. Well, with today's on-the-go consumer, that didn't last very long. And eventually, the, the economies associated with more plastic-based packaging allowed them to lightweight and to come up with bigger sizes. Unfortunately, in that journey, it wasn't properly proportioned. The bottles got kind of tall. They didn't fit into the refrigerator in people's hands. Through consumer research that we conduct, working with our clients, we discovered there was an opportunity that consumers actually want to have a lot of ketchup on hand as long as it fits with in their everyday lives into their fridge. This is called the Fridge Fit Package. It's uh, designed to be very ergonomic and it fits right into the fridge. And it brings back some of the niceties of the old glass bottle that had these hexagonal, you know, memorable details that kind of bring that heritage back to the brand. Because as our appliances change, they don't, it's, they're not drastic changes, but let's say the doors are n more narrow or you have less space or shelving is redesigned, the packaging has to be redesigned on products. Right, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. It's like what came first, the, the bottle or the fridge? Uh, <laughs> but it, it needs to be designed in concert with your home. So that thoughtfulness and the thoroughness and investigation that we do reveals opportunities for marketers to key in on a missing element. A couple more I want to get to before we sure. run out of time. The coffee can has become history. And Folgers, you had the opportunity to really rework what was once the coffee can, but now it's a plastic container. It's a great honor. Uh, we were a part of a piece of history, if you think about it. F um, prior to this, it was about 150 years of metal cans for coffee packaging. And this can uh, utilize a technology that Procter & Gamble is very smart to identify. It's a little technical, but there's a valve in this that lets the coffee off gas. The uh -huh. coffee's got a lot of aroma and so forth in it. The cans were necessary to maintain the pressure of all that inner pressure. While going to the valve, they could have this nice peel back seal that's super convenient. No more the coffee can, can opener, opener cutting edge. Can opener, oh, right, all those.
capsules. Exactly. Because it's now in this format with this plastic, it's called a blow molded package, again, the behind the scenes mm -hmm. of packaging lingo, we're able to uh, cost effectively, it's a kind of a freebie, mold in, evaluate, and handle for the consumers. Again, an opportunity to differentiate, say we're thoughtfully thinking of you, and maybe you'll buy more, uh, more coffee in the larger size because now you can actually hold it. Well, we only have 15 seconds left, but Similac, you did the same thing. For moms with holding a baby in one arm, you had to make it so that they could access the formula easily. Right. Again, research. All of what we do is rooted in identifying what the user really needs, revealing these opportunities for the brands to make that compelling point of difference. The before was a metal can, similar to the Folgers, and for whatever reason in the manufacturing process, they would drop this scoop in and then fill it with pop powder. Yeah, maybe and fold it up so people sure, can see sure. it. Yeah, so there um, it is. So what you're seeing... You fish around to find, I did it for so many years, to find the scoop. Right. So imagine your, your, your hands are being covered in the powder that your child is <laughs> going to ingest. It's not a necessarily a positive brand experience. There's all sorts of nices that are designed in this that it follows the curvature of the scoops. So you can get that last little bit out. In today's economy, you don't want to be wasting any product. In the product. corners. Well, Peter, just so clever. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so nice to see a Connecticut company so involved in these major brands we see in grocery stores across the country. Product Ventures, thanks well, for joining us. Well, thank you. It's a real pleasure. And that's all for this week. We'll see you next week on 12 on the Money. I'm Rebecca Saran.